Okay, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to stop hitting your new Tospin forehand. If you've been working on a new modern forehand, there's a chance you're hitting a lot of forehands in the net. So if that sounds like you, and you wanna learn how to hit a beautiful Tospin forehand over the net, deep in the corner, then this video is for you. Let's get started. Okay, so maybe you are new to topspin. You're trying to learn how to hit topspin, or maybe you had uh, more of an old school grip, a continental or a weak eastern, and you've moved over to a semi-western grip, especially I find people who are changing their grip for the first time, hit a lot of topspin forehands into the net. I'm gonna explain why this is happening. You know, you're watching TV, you're watching Roth on TV, you're, you're so enamored with the way he gets here and just rips those topspin forehands, and you wanna do the same thing, but it's not working like that for you. In fact, you're hitting a lot of forehands in the net. Even sometimes, you might hit a forehand, and it might not even reach the net. I've had a lot of my students, when we've worked on new grips, or we've worked on modernizing their forehand, their first several forehands, which I don't freak out about because they're learning how to hit topspin, right? So sometimes part of the process of learning how to hit topspin is that the ball will actually spin into the net and uh, you know it, it throws people off. They, they think that they're way off. They think that uh, it's, it's embarrassing, it's discouraging, but that's actually as a coach when I get excited because that ball I just hit had a ton of topspin and it actually was a decent looking stroke and I wasn't far off from the sweet spot. So if I did all of those things right, if I had good technique, if I hit the ball pretty much in the middle of the strings and I had topspin, why is that such an embarrassing forehand? Well, I'm gonna explain why. So especially if you're changing the grip, you can get away with having a much more level swing. Because of the angle of your racket, you can get away with having a much more level swing and the ball's still gonna go over the net. So I'm gonna use a continental grip and I'm gonna keep my racket pretty much at waist level. I'm not, I'm not gonna really drop the racket head. I'm gonna keep it at waist level and swing through and you're gonna find that the ball's not gonna have much spin. It's not gonna have much arc and shape but most of these balls, I believe, are gonna go over the net. Now, of course, until you hit the ball, you never know what's gonna happen. But I believe most of these balls are gonna clear the net, and uh, we'll see what happens here. I could be wrong. So I'm gonna come here. Again, I'm not gonna really drop below the ball. I'm gonna stay pretty level. Hit, boom, over the net. See that? Nice shot. I'm gonna do it again, but you can see there's not really any much spin on it. I'm gonna come here, pretty much stay level with the ball, boom, over the net, okay? Now, watch this. I'm gonna go, you know what, I really wanna learn a new forehand. By the way, if you wanna modernize your forehand, you wanna go to 7dayforehandchallenge.com right now, sign up, because we're starting March 22nd, seven days of free forehand training for you. You get free 48 hour access to each day if you want lifetime access, it's just super cheap, so you should do it. So now look at this. I'm changing the grip. See, now, now doesn't this look more like a Federer, more like a Nadal gain set, more like a Djokovic? These are all, this is the move right here. You wanna see the modern move? This is it, looks good. But let's say I, I just keep it right at this level, see? Look, if I change the grip, I'm here, I'm level. But with a new grip, notice how the racket head is more facing upwards, okay? The way the wrist is set up. And if I just stay at this level, can you guys already see what's gonna happen here? Right? Boom, see, now we're back. Same exact swing path that I was doing before when I was hitting the ball over the net with an old school forehand, I guess you'd say. So with the modern forehand and in life, we never tend to do things as big as we think we are. You know, So you might think you're getting under the ball, but you're really not. And we don't want to get under the ball and scoop our racket. That's another thing that people do. They'll get the right grip and then they want to get over the net and they see some going in that. So they start scooping. They start doing what I call a tweak. That's not what we want to do. We want to keep the strings facing towards the ground, facing towards the ground, facing towards the ground. You see that? Coming up, boom, hitting. We just hit a beautiful toss in forehand and it went over the net. Why? Because what we want to do is if the ball is up here, okay, this is where we're going to make contact with the ball to ensure that that ball is gonna go over the net, especially in the beginning, I wanna focus on getting my racket a good foot 
to a foot and a half under the ball. Now, it doesn't have to be, as you get better, you don't have to go that far under the ball every time, okay? But that's what I'd focus on in the beginning. I'd really think, I'd really think about getting a good 12 inches, right? 12 to 15 inches under the ball just to make sure I can get this idea of coming under the tennis ball and, and, then, and then coming here and just swinging up to it and through it. See, once we get under it, we can swing up to it and through it. We don't have to keep rising up dramatically either. We don't need to have this dramatic arc on it. We come here, we come down, we come up to it and go through it, like reach out. And that will go over the net and in, okay? So that's what I'm gonna focus on right here. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna drop under it, lift it, and you can see we got that tossman. Let's try that again. And we know that now, all of a sudden, you can see that's a different ball. Again, let me show you a little more old school, a little more flat tennis shot. Again, I don't have to have that big looping arc. I could just come here, go straight through it, boom. There's that ball. Now, if I want to change my grip, I want to be a little more modern, especially if I want to have a, a heavy one, like kind of like Rafa, right? Now I'm going to drop under and roll. And you can see that that ball has more shape to it. Do you see that? It's got a nice little curve. Now, what's cool about the shape we're putting on the tennis ball is it gives us that feeling of safety. It's like the difference between an amateur bowler and a professional bowler, right? Think about that old school stroke is your amateur bowler where they pretty much have to go and really, it almost takes more skill. They have to go line up the middle pin and try and go straight at it. And that's tough to repeat over and over again. You can throw a strike once in a while, but the professional bowler, by adding spin to the ball, gives them more security. They come here, it's definitely a more advanced thing. It takes more timing, it takes more reps, right? It probably takes more work to perfect, but once they perfect that feeling, that gives them the security. They know they're gonna throw it out towards the, the, the gutter there and it's gonna spin back in, hit the pin right at the right angle, and they're gonna be able to repeat that over and over again. Well, for us tennis players, the toss spin, knowing that we're gonna get that spin on the ball, okay, it gives us a feeling of security. It's almost like a security blanket. It gives us the feeling that we can accelerate at a pretty good clip here, and that spin is gonna keep the ball into the court. So we can be a more aggressive tennis player. Now, like I said, it takes more skill, it takes more training, it takes more expertise if you're a bowler to put that spin on it and have it curve in than it does your first time out bowling going straight ahead. That's easier. So you need some good training for that. And that's what I'm about to provide you right now with my seven day forehand challenge. Go to sevendayforehandchallenge.com or go in the description box or in the card section right here. So you don't even need to go type it in. You just go click that link, sign up for free. You got free 48 hour access. We're going to teach you the ATP forehand blueprint. I'm going to teach you how to get the ultimate rally ball. Like I was just showing you a ball you can make like a hundred times in a row, but hit aggressively. We're going to teach you the serve plus one play. We're going to teach you how to crunch and munch approach shots. It's really awesome. You get free 48 hour access to each and every day. You can even send me videos of yourself hitting forehands and I will analyze it. Or you can just say hello. If you just want to say hello, you can even win money. Like it's a no brainer. If you love tennis and you're watching this video, you should be signing up for the seven day forehand challenge. So sign up for that, seven day forehand challenge.com. We're gonna start March 22nd, so we're starting really, really soon. There's a chance you might be watching this video too late. I had, last time people watched, most people got in, we had over, I think, 2,400 people get into our seven day uh, serve challenge, but some people signed up late and they were wondering where the videos were. And I was like, we already did it. The dates are right there on the webpage. So we start March 22nd. So make sure if you're watching this video before March 22nd, you sign up right now. And if you like tennis and you love tennis and you thought this video was good, do me a couple favors right now. Smash up the like button, subscribe because we're coming close to 50,000 subscribers. And if you're one of my subscribers and you're on my email list, so you gotta subscribe and get on my email list. And you can do that by getting in the seven day forehand challenge. When I get to 50,000 subscribers, I'm gonna hold a raffle and give $200 away to Tennis Express. So you can go on a shopping spree, maybe pick up a new racket, get yourself some new grip, get yourself some new gear, okay? So, we'll see you guys on the next video. It's all about forehands right now, so the next video you see will probably be on the forehand. Make sure you sign up for the seven day forehand challenge. We'll see you guys, take care.